Hello, I'm Wander001, and this is my review of the Roku Streaming Stick Model 3800. This is the newer version of the older Roku Streaming Stick, which was that purple uh, streaming stick review over there. Uh, so I'm really getting this as a replacement for my mother-in-law who inherited that streaming stick. Uh, so the reason behind that is the, the power of the older Roku Streaming Stick was a little bit under even what the Roku 3 could put out. This guy is much better than that, and I figured for Christmas, since she won't be seeing this, uh, she'll get an upgrade. So, let's talk about specs. The Roku streaming stick here is 3.3 inches in length, has a width of 0.8, and a depth of half an inch. Now, to put that into context, here it is next to a flash drive or on top of a deck of cards. So this is a really small device. You will notice that the stick itself is made up of matte plastic all around, so you're not really getting much here to look at, but that's okay. Uh, you do have a single reset button on the side and a micro USB port to power this device. Now, you may be asking yourself, why streaming stick when Roku is coming out with all of these new uh, devices, uh, the Premiere, the Premiere Plus, uh, which are really small when compared to the set-top box, Premiere Plus, that I have over there, review. Uh, well, they still need an HDMI cable. This does not. As you can see, there is an HDMI adapter right there. You plug this into the side of your TV and you now have access to the Roku channel store. Now, there is an indicator light here. Now, for my purposes, the way that this plugs into my TV, it looks like this. So my problem with that is the indicator light is on the back side of this for my TV. Problem being, uh, I can't tell when it's flashing or accepting commands. That, that's not terrible. The other Roku uh, streaming stick that I had did the same thing. Also, with this particular device as compared to something like the Amazon Fire TV 4K and the Google Chromecast, uh, which had a bendable cable so that you can get this where you want it. If you have a cabinet, which I used to have, this will stick out and might be difficult to uh, maneuver around that. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you get yourself an adapter if that's a problem. Now, speaking of, what comes in the box with the Roku streaming stick are a five foot power adapter cable, which uh, is mostly useful uh, to get to your cableage if you have uh, electrical power down below, or you can plug this right into the TV and there are benefits to that. You'll notice that the part that sticks into the Roku device itself is an L shape. You also have a wall wart if you do need to power this, so you can see it's a USB type. Uh, this is significantly smaller than the old USB wall wart that came with the purple version of this. Now, speaking of power usage, you can plug this directly into your TV with just the provided cable or use the wall wart. Now, the beauty of this is compared to the original Roku streaming stick, this uses significantly less power. So when idling, it uses between 2.1 and 2.2 watts. If you have the screensaver on, which I'll show you a little later when I show you the interface, 2.4 to 2.5. And when streaming Netflix HD, because this is an HD, not a 4K version, uh, they do have the Roku Streaming Stick Plus, which is 4K, a little more expensive, and I don't need 4K because I still don't have a 4K TV. But when streaming HD Netflix, it uses between 2.6 and 2.7 watts of power, which is a little more than the previous Roku Stick. So you're gonna save yourself some power, but this also has a neat trick. So I said when it was idling or the screensaver was on, it was drawing power. However, if, if you don't have it plugged into power and you have it plugged directly into your TV set, if the TV set is off, this is not drawing power, it's turned off. So you could save yourself a little bit of extra electricity plugging this directly into the TV. And I would recommend it because it just makes it so much easier using this when it's plugged directly into the TV set as opposed to a power, because then you don't have to worry about sucking up a power plug on your entertainment center. 
So the Roku, Roku streaming stick also has some extra features that the previous version did not have. Uh, mainly it's compatible with the new 802.11ac uh, 5 gigahertz standard. The older version could not. Now I will preface this. It does support 2.4 gigahertz as well as the 5 gigahertz. 5 gigahertz you are going to get faster connection speeds but your distance will be cut down. Uh, if you use it on 2.4 gigahertz you can stick this further away from your Wi-Fi access point. Now I did find originally when I was using this under the 5 gigahertz spectrum because I want faster speeds and it's right next to my it's TV and then right next to my TV is my Wi-Fi access point. When I was on the 5 gigahertz spectrum because I live in a condo complex and there's lots of people out there broadcasting, uh, when I was on a crowded 5 gigahertz spectrum, the stability and connectivity of the Roku suffered drastically. I had buffering like I've never seen before and it just it could not stay connected. So what I ended up doing was using a app, Wi-Fi Analyzer, review over there, to find a channel that nobody was on, or at least very few people were on. And once I moved my Wi-Fi access point to stay on that channel, the stability and connectivity issues went away. So if you are experiencing something like that, I would recommend checking out that app to help yourself. I ended up finding um, that my access, my Wi-Fi access point, uh, again, if you're interested, review over there, uh, could hit up a, Spectrum number that uh, not many people around me were able to get with their lower and cheaper Wi-Fi router. So I jumped to that, this was able to connect and connectivity issues went away. So one of the beauties of any Roku device is that it is pretty much a plug and play solution. You stick this into your TV set, you go through the setup process which does require you to create a Roku account. It's not terrible, it does ask you to put a credit card information into the website, uh, but that's only because there are certain channels and things that you can do uh, that would require payment. Now, I will say that the majority of things that I use are free. I've only paid for one Roku channel, and I did that through the store itself of that particular channel, not the Roku app itself. Uh, don't worry, Roku's not gonna do anything nefarious with your credit card information. But, as I said, plug and play. Part of that is the remote that comes with your Roku device. Now, this is the Roku streaming stick version of the Roku remote. This is one of the latest redesigns that they have done. There are a lot of things that I like about this and one thing that I kinda don't, well, two things that I kinda don't like. But let's start off looking at the top of the Roku remote here. You will notice this, this is a power button. But what are you powering on if this powers itself on when your TV is turned on? Well, this is a new feature that Roku devices can now support. This uses an IR blaster and can turn your TV on and off. That is the newest trick that your Roku remote can do. And it is one of the features that I feel separates it from a lot of the other solutions out there. And one of the main reasons that I like this new redesign. Right there, you'll notice that's a little hole. That is a microphone, because you can see you can ask your Roku to look for things verbally. You have a back button and home button, so this is primarily how you're gonna go navigate back in screens again. I'll show you that a little later. Home brings you back to your home screen. You have a D-pad here. This is rubberized and an OK button in the center. You will notice that the front is this matte plastic. The matte plastic goes all around. Uh, it does not show fingerprints, but as you can see there, if your hands get a little hot and sweaty, it will show that. You have your 30 second rewind button, your verbal command activation. This is a asterisk key, which will pretty much just uh, on certain menus, bring up extra contextual menu options. You have your rewind, play pause, and fast forward. Now, here's the first part that I don't like. These buttons here. I like that they're there. They're shortcut keys, but these are hardwired shortcut keys. You can never change these keys. This will forever be Netflix, this will forever be Sling, Hulu, DirecTV Now. I have an older Roku remote where the button that was on the front, the channel doesn't exist anymore. I will never be able to change that. Roku, come on, please make it so I can pick what these are. That's all I'm asking. Coming along to the side here, you have a volume control. Now, the volume control works in conjunction with this power button and that IR blaster. These buttons will control, your, will control your TV's volume. That is awesome. Sadly, this level of the remote does not have the private listening mode, so that's a small downfall. They do have an upgraded version of this remote, which does support that, 
But for me, my TVs in my living room, I used private listening mode on my older version. I can maybe three, four times at most. Coming down to the bottom here, you will notice it keeps the Roku fabric tag. I will say that the power button and IR blaster are one of the leaps and bounds uh, innovations that they've done, aside from getting rid of the lanyard that they used to have instead of this fabric tag. Coming to the back, you will see it's just, it's got a divot for your finger, so it makes it easier to hold on to when you're using the directional button, because pretty much this is how you're moving around the screen. Uh, it has a drawer for the included AAA batteries and has a pairing button right there for your Roku. Now the AAA batteries is kind of one of the things I don't like. I wish they were AA, but I do realize that that would increase the size of this remote. Now I will preface, if you have another Roku in your house, uh, when I got this originally, the Roku remote here automatically paired to my other Roku, so I did have to actually go through the menus and use the pairing button in order to get this to work with the Roku stick. Now, one of the things I have found, if you leave the Roku stick here plugged into your TV, when you first initialize it, the Roku itself will boot up and you will need to reestablish a connection with the remote. And by reestablish that, I mean you just kind of have to give it a wave so that it realizes that the two are paired. Not terrible, but it's something to consider. There is a process by which you do have to go through setting up the power button here. It's not a terrible process. I'll show you that a little later with the application itself, but I was concerned that it would not work with my probably 10 plus year old uh, TCL TV right now. Uh, what it boils down to is you point this at your TV and it will say, do you hear music? Okay. Sends information to the TV. Did the music stop? Yes or no? If yes, yeah, your remote's paired. If not, okay, gonna try something different. Did it mute then? No. Tell me what your TV is. Type in the brand name of your TV, and then it starts running through codes. And it, for me, it was the second TCL code that worked. So it's a little bit of work, but I assure you, that power button and limiting the amount of remotes that you need, very, very worth it. So I've talked a lot about the, the application, what you're actually going to be using the Roku for, which is watching TV, Netflix, Amazon, things of that nature. So why don't I show you what that looks like now? All right, so if you've seen one Roku interface, you've seen them all. But if this is your first time actually looking at a Roku device, well, you're in luck. This is going to be a walkthrough of what the Roku user interface looks like. By default, you are going to start here on the home and home is going to just list out all your channels over here to the right. There is a way to select channels in the feed over here. I will show you how to do that a little later. You will notice right up here, you have your time and then a grayed out options button. Now we did talk about that asterisk key on the Roku remote before. You will notice if I push it now, nothing is happening. But if I select using the D-pad, moving over. So we're gonna come over to the right. Now we are in our channel guide. If I select the asterisk key, that gives me options for this individual channel. I can rate the channel, I can move the channel, I can remove the channel, I can give feedback on the channel, or I could close. Or I can press the back button on the Roku remote and get out of that channel. If I wish to move the channel, I can select that and then move it wherever I want in this grid, just using the directional pad and then pressing OK to lock it into place. So let's say I don't like the layout of all of these channels, I can move them around as I see fit. You will notice over here on the right, this is a rotating ad box. And well, Roku is a free platform, so it is ad supported. If you click on that ad by pressing the OK, it will generally bring you directly to whatever is being advertised. And I'm trying to see if I can get it to change. So if I were to go over to Philo here, it would start my free trial of this particular channel. You can see just above Prime Video that it says I have three of 37 channels. That's because, well, that was channel three of 37. Uh, realistically, I use Netflix, HBO Go, Prime every now and then. 
Uh, I have tested Sling review over in the corner if you want and some other things which are still on my Roku device here because your Roku account links all of your Roku devices together. So all the channels that I had on my Premiere also show up on my stick right now. Coming down the list on the side here, you have Featured Free. So this is a Roku supported this is what's free that we can show you. It may be totally free, it may be ad supported, but uh, it will show you a bunch of free things that you can watch and not have to pay subscriptions for. So recent TV, catch up on fall. I mean, there's a lot of things in here. Uh, horror because, you know, well, I'm doing this around uh, the start of October, so Halloween is just around the corner, is what free is. Now you'll notice if I push the directional, it's just dragging me through the possible things to watch. So you have to hit the back button to bring you back to the menu on the side. Coming down to my feed, these are things you can set up and I'll show you in the search area where it will notify you when something new happens or something comes out. So in this case, Game of Thrones, multiple episodes just added. And that little purple tick mark means that it's brand new, something has happened. Selecting it, it will show me where I can get these partic uh, this particular show. So included with subscription for HBO Go. I can buy from Fandango now for $2.99 an episode because it's showing you up there episode uh, seven. And it will also indicate if it's HD or not. And if we come and look, uh, you will notice that the check marks indicate that I have it on the device. If that was no check mark, if there was no check mark there. That means that channel is not on my device, but you can always download it. Uh, here you see Gardens of the Galaxy, uh, Agent Carter. That is what my feed is. Coming back, we have Movie Store as supported by Fandango. Now, Movie Store, TV Store, and Featured can all be removed from the side panel here to free up space, and I'll show you how to do that a little later. But Movie Store by Fandango, if we select that, it's going to show us things that we can buy or rent. So here you can see all the new to buy, new to rent, and rent with bundles and save. Uh, so if you wanted to, you can come through and select. You can see it's got Rotten Tomato scores and all that fun stuff over there. And we're just going to go back to the TV store. So it's going to be the same thing. Hit TV shows, returning favorites my TV watch list if you had a account with Fandango. I do not, but again, it will show you information about the particular TV show. If we click into it, you can select your seasons. And if we dig in even further, it will say, here you go. You can recap this. The recap is free, uh, but over here, you can see this particular episode is $1.99. Now I'm gonna hit the back button to go back all the way to my side menu here, because the next item is search. If we select search, we can search for movie TV actor. You could see all the things that you can search for right up there. Now, uh, generally what I tend to look for is Evil Dead. So we're just gonna continue my spree of doing that. And then you'll notice that it is auto-completing on the side there. You will notice that the icons are different as well. One indicates a movie, one indicates a TV show. And if we come down and do a space, here we go, Evil Dead. Um, that is the latest incarnation of it, but you'll notice that it shows you information over here. Selecting it further, again, brings you to the menu option, which will show you where you can get it, if it's free, how much, or uh, if you have the channel installed. Follow this movie on Roku. We'll put it into that follow feed area that I showed you earlier. So you could do that if you wanted to. Now, you will notice that I had to hunt and peck using the Roku remote. You can also use the Roku app on iOS and Android, view over there, which will allow you to type what you're looking for. Now, because this is a voice activated remote, I can also press this button which then pops up this menu. I just tapped it really quick, so it didn't fully actuate. So let me go back and I will go search and I'm gonna say Evil Dead. And then it brings up all the Evil Dead. 
Now, the, the voice search does not work on every screen. If you're in an app, it might not work. But on this screen, if I so, cho so chose Star Wars, and here you go. It's going to bring up all this stuff on Star Wars. The voice search is not terrible. It uh, can be difficult at times, but I would rather have it than not have it. We're going to go all the way back because now we're coming to streaming channels. This is how you actually get your information. Those, those channels that you saw before, Netflix, Hulu, things of that. This is where you come and get them. So you've got featured. You will notice that these particular channels here do not have check marks in the corner. Well, this and this do. That means that those are on my device. New and notable, again, just new and notable TV streams. Just added, same thing. Most popular, top free. This is probably where I would recommend starting. And search channels. If there was a particular channel, you could type it in or try and use the voice search. Uh, for this one in particular, I would recommend typing it in as opposed to the voice search. You can also select genres, which is kind of nice too. So movies, TV, uh, it will help aggregate the channels that you might be most interested in. So let's say you have kids and family. Well, here's all the kids and family show or channels that you might be interested in. And again, uh, selecting one will show you information on it. You can view screenshots on it. So here's screenshots of the particular channel. And then if you wanted to, you could add the channel right from here. If the channel was paid, it would indicate that it was a paid channel. Let me see if I can find one that's paid. All right, you'll have to take my word for it. If it was a paid channel, it would let you know. Settings. This is the important part because this is where you set up your Roku device. So you have, coming to the right, network. This is how your Roku connects to the internet so that you can watch these channels. You can select about, which will tell you information about the network it's on, private information there, sorry, not gonna show you that. Check your connection will allow you to check and see how your wireless connection is doing. So here, it is checking my wireless connection and it's checking to see if it has internet connection. Uh, Cause you can be connected wirelessly, but not actually connected to the internet. Everything was successful, so we're just going to leave that alone. This is also where you can come in and set up your wireless connection because you kind of need to do that. Coming over to wireless, you would click that, and what it will do is scan all the networks that are in the vicinity. So here you see Pilsy, Hal, Foamy, and then a whole bunch of other ones here. Those are channels that it can connect to. If one of those is yours, you would click on it and then type in your password to get in. All right. Coming back to the left, that was networks. We're moving on to themes. You'll notice right now that there's a purple background. Well, let's say you don't want a purple background. You can come over here and go to my themes and you can kind of see over there previewed what types of themes you can have. Now, some of these uh, are paid themes. However, I got them when they were free in the store or you could see some of them are like ad related. Uh, so I don't use them much but I got them because they were free and if it's free, it's for me. You can also get more themes and coming here, it will bring you to all the possible themes, but it'll also show you over here in the corner if you have to pay for it or not. Selecting the theme will allow you to buy or view screenshots to determine if this is something that you would like. Now, themes are nice to differentiate your Roku, but personally, I don't spend enough time on the home screen to justify paying, especially like $2.99 for a background that I will never see. Some of them are hobby related. Uh, some of them are, in this case, you could see like Star Trek, so they're specific things. Uh, if you watch this occasionally, some of them will come up for free. Like this one uh, is free, but uh, there was one in here. Let's see if I can find it. Zen uh, was something that you could uh, pay for at one time, but I guess they've moved it to the free. But I digress. You do have a few like these that are built in. Now, if I select Nebula, what it's going to do is it's going to change the theme and you'll notice that things look different. Those are built in. So up until Daydream, those are ones that are built into the Roku device. 
So I'm going to leave it on Nebula just so you can uh, see that. You can come down to custom settings, which is enable featured themes. So around the holidays, regardless of what your background choice is, it will choose a different background for 4th of July, Christmas, uh, Halloween, and you'll get a specialized background. And it's, it's a nice feature to have. So I don't see why turning it off or why you would turn it off. Coming down, screensaver. Over to the right. You have several choices for the screensaver. You have a digital clock. Now, all of these you can preview, so I'll show you what the clock looks like. That's it. It would just be a clock there. Now, because my Roku seems to be having difficulties with this particular theme, I think I'm going to go back to the default theme to make it easier for the camera to focus. But we're going to go back to screensavers for a minute. By default, it puts you on this movie scrolling theme. You also have, well, I have National Parks because it's part of a background bundle as well as the Celebrating Spring by Claritin. Uh, I don't use those. I leave it on this movie magic one and I'm gonna preview it for you because I want you to see something. What it is, it's a scrolling cityscape, but every now and then, and you see it coming up on the right here, there's an ad. And that's one of the problems with this particular screensaver is it inputs ads. Now, again, Roku is a free service, so they need to make money somehow. If you start your device by pushing the OK button and you're on this screensaver, it will bring you into that ad. So I always recommend when you're turning on your Roku device, if it's in sleep mode, uh, hitting the home button so that you don't select the ad that's playing. Now, the other thing is, the ad, especially this one, uses more power than when your Roku is just idling. Personal thoughts. I mean, if you have it, if you have your Roku, like I have over here, plugged into the side of the TV, when you power off your TV, it doesn't go into this idle mode. So if you're just watching stuff, this wouldn't be terrible. But if you have your Roku plugged into electricity directly, that could be a problem. So we're going to hit back. And that was an example of screensavers that you could have. Oh, I did neglect to mention there are wait times. You can disable the screensaver altogether, or you can select how long it is before the screensaver turns itself on. Moving on, you have display type. You can have it auto detect, or you can select 720 or 1080. Uh, again, this particular Roku does not do 4K. Accessibility, there are lots of options here, so I'm not going to run through them all, but just know there are plenty of accessibility options. You have caption mode, caption preferences, caption style, audio, I mean, lots of things for you to go through if you need those types of services. Remote, this is interesting. Pair remote, this is how if your Roku remote does not automatically pair with your Roku device, how you can do that. You would go through, open up the back, push the button I showed you before, and pair it that way. Battery level. So this shows you for my particular battery, or my particular remote that I'm using with this Roku, I have 100% battery, so all is good. Setting up TV control. This is what I was explaining to you before. If we come over and do that, do you hear music? You probably can't, but I can because I have a lapel mic, which is why you can't hear things. I go, yes. And I have the Roku remote pointed at the TV and it's asking, do I still hear music? Well, no, the music did not stop. Now, did the music stop? Yes. So what it's doing is you can see over there on there, it muted it. I say yes. And it says, okay. And then if you look, I can now use the Roku device to change the volume on my TV. That's all there is to pairing this particular remote. It's, it's, simplistic and beautiful in its own way. Moving along, audio, you've got menu, menu volume, so low, medium, and high, audio volume, stereo, HDMI, auto detect, night listening mode. Uh, I would recommend putting that on. So what it does is if there's an explosion, it tries to decrease the power or the volume output. And if there's talking, it tries to increase those to make it easier to hear. And I'm surprised I did not put that on before. 
And speaking of the menu buttons, what that is is the little ticking sounds or the ba doop ba doops that you hear. Uh, you, again, probably can't because I have the lapel mic. Home screen. So remember I said those things on the side, if you don't want them, that you could get rid of them? Well, here's that featured by Roku. We can say, don't want that. And I come over here, movie stores, don't want that. And then go back. So if, and I'm gonna jump all the way back to the home screen now, notice that those items are no longer there and it kinda cleans up your side menu. So if you don't have Fandango or don't feel like buying things for Fandango, get rid of them and your side menu here will be much cleaner. All right, we're gonna come all the way back down to home screen because that's where we left off and then we're gonna go to privacy, advertising. So like I said, Roku is free, they need to make money. I recommend limiting ad tracking because what it does is it prevents them supposedly from using your watch history and everything to customize the advertisements that they give to you. Uh, so me being a male in my mid thirties, if I do this, I'm probably not going to see ads that are relevant to me anymore. So I will see women's feminine hygiene products. Maybe uh, it, it just, makes it so that they're not targeting you. I recommend doing that. You can also reset advertising identifier. And if you did not have the limited tracking turned on before, I would suggest doing this and then turning on the limited tracking so that they can not do that. Now, they also have microphone. So you have channels, microphone access. You can select prompt, always, or never. So this is giving microphone access, so that button, so channels may need access to the microphone. Uh, I would go with prompt, uh, so that it notifies you that a channel wants to use your microphone access. Uh, same thing with channels, you can also reset the channel permissions from here if you wanted to. You'll notice that no channels are set for me because I didn't have any channels that requested access. All right. Last but not least, system. First one is about, there's a lot of personal information, so we're gonna skip over that one and jump right into time. Uh, you can select your time zone. You can select your format. You'll notice that I leave it on set automatically because, well, it's just easier. Control other devices, one touch play. I do not have something that supports this, but it's on by default, so just know that it's there. Language, again, you can select from a selection of languages. Screen mirroring, you have, again, because it's asking for permission to do these things, you can prompt always or never. And then right now you can see I have no devices currently doing that. System update, this is important to make sure that your Roku device is constantly on the latest firmware. Now, by default, it does check and you can see uh, last update was September 3rd. Last time it checked was today at 8.32 a.m. But if I wanted to, I can tell it check now and it will check, and there you see no software updates because it's showing me this is the current build. And for right now, when I'm recording, that is the current build. System restart, if for whatever reason your Roku device freezes or becomes unresponsive, does not happen often, maybe once or twice I've had to do this, you could restart your system. Advanced settings, so you can factory reset, which I will do after I uh, finish this review so that when I give this to my mother-in-law, none of my Roku information is on here. So factory resetting will require you to input a code that you see at the bottom here to fully factory reset, right there. Network connection reset, again, your network that it's connected to, you could reset that. And you can also reset controlled devices. And this is third-party licensing information. A uh, lot to read through, most people don't but it's there, just know it's there. And then right after that, we'd be back at about. So clicking the home button brings us back to the home of the Roku device. And again, you just select over and you can get into your Netflix. So that has been a longer walkthrough than you probably were expecting, but now you know exactly how to set up and use your Roku device. There are a lot of reasons why I like Roku and suggest it to my family members, as well as I've had several different Roku iterations. The big reason is it's a separate company. It is not beholden to Netflix, to Apple, to Google. It wants to play everything and anything. 
If you get a Google Chromecast, you've got to play in Google's Playground. If you get an Apple TV, same thing, play in Apple's Playground. Amazon, it, it, it wants you to get the Amazon Fire Stick and use their stuff. And then the three big ones get in with, into arguments with each other and then content from one is not supported on another. With the Roku, you don't have that problem. It does not care where you're getting your stuff from. It just wants to help you enjoy it and play it wherever. So that is why I love the Roku environment. And the, the user interface is the same pretty much on every single Roku device that I've had. So if you know how to use one, you'll know how to use it in the future. I've given you a lot of information to think about and look at, and you're probably asking yourself, well, yeah, I know all of this stuff, but how much does it cost? Well, if you can find it on sale, generally you can find it for about $40. Retail is normally $50. It's not terrible if you are just looking for a plug and play Roku device. You don't want a box that sits on your entertainment center or you don't want to have to deal with HDMI cables or heck, if you are traveling a lot and you want to have access to your Netflix on the big screen in your hotel room instead of watching it on your computer or phone, this is ideal for that. Small remote, small Roku device, they travel well. You don't have to worry about that. If you haven't gotten the idea by this point in the review that I love Roku devices and especially have a fondness for these little streaming sticks, if you don't need the superpower that you get with one of the set-top boxes, I don't know what else I can tell you. I highly recommend the Roku streaming stick. I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching.